Let's derive an equation for the auto cycle thermal efficiency. This is in every engineering thermodynamics textbook when they cover the auto cycle. It's a big deal. It's a big conclusion. And basically, the thermal efficiency is a function of the compression ratio and the K. And what is K for air? 1.4. And this equation, it may not be easy to see, but as R goes up, the thermal efficiency goes up. You want a high compression ratio engine. It's good for thermal performance. That's the bottom line, and we can drive this result. So how am I going to derive this result? Well, here it is. What did we start with? We started with the definition of the thermal efficiency. It's work net divided by Q in, which is from state 2 to 3. What did we do at this stage? We said, hey, instead of going calculating two works, think about Q net, which is equal to work net, and I already have, you know, in the numerator and the denominator, I have the same thing, Q2 to 3. So I'll substitute that in, and now I'm getting something that looks like 1 plus another term. Look at the answer, 1 plus another term. I'm moving in that direction, okay. What are we going to do at this point? Well, this is based on constant specific heats. So, substitute what is Q4 to 1 and what is Q2 to 3 in terms of the temperatures, T1, T4, T2, T3. What cancels? The specific heats. Now, I rearrange just a little bit to get that minus sign out front. I want to make it like that minus sign. And now I have the higher temperature minus the lower temperature. T4 is greater than T1, isn't it? And T3 is greater than T2. At this point, this is the, where most people would get lost. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Well, you remember that, that it's isentropic compression from 1 to 2. From 1 to 2, it's isentropic. And even though it's from 3 to 4, you're doing isentropic expansion, it's just as if you did isentropic compression from 4 to 3. Either way, you can write this equation as well as that equation. What do you mean? What, where did these equations come from? First of all, I better get the right equation, right? You remember these equations? Didn't we just use them? Now you express them such that I can substitute for T3 right here and T2 right there. But when I do that, both of those terms have the common R to the K minus 1. Look at what I've got down here, R to the K minus 1. So I'm moving in the right direction. Notice that you get T4 minus T1 over T4 minus T1 both terms times R to the K minus 1, guess what cancels the T4 minus T1s? It's your, wow, you're a genius. No, I've just done this too many times. Right? And the per first person that did it was the genius. All right? And then finally, that's our result. Does that make sense? This is a big result.